kick them out there, right? Um, I am not, I'm not John. I'm not NBC. I am not an engineer. I'm not. I come more from the Ernie Sloan school of get her working. If you make a contact with it, it's a good engine. Yeah, close enough, right? So I'm going to just start it. This, this is really meant for the beginners. This isn't really meant for the old guys that have been around here forever. <laughs> you guys will be able to tell me that I'm going to be walking right through you. Oh, you are. I'm going to be using don't move our it. chalk bar. All right. All right, so we have an antenna. Analog. We have an antenna. Ooh, look at this antenna. Shiny, right? Okay. How long should I make this? What frequency? Depends. Exactly. What frequency? So for today, we're going to focus on 146.0 megahertz. All right. I'm not going to go into uber crazy lower detail here, but that's my frequency. That's my target. Okay. So what is how 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 long should I cut this for? What's the formula? Anybody remember? Uh, for a dipole. Yeah, or right. You get on the internet. Tell us. 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 Tell of this dipole in feet. Well, all right, so let's just do it. 468, get out your calculators, because this is uh, This isn't what? <laughs> this is like, you know, for fun, right? So, 468 divided by 146 equals 3.20 feet. So I'm going to times 12. That gives me 38.46 inches. 38 and a half. 38 and a half. Close. <laughs> exactly. Excuse me. Divided by two. Yeah. Each yeah. element. Okay. Well, by four for each exactly. element. So, now I'm going to be silly. Okay? Uh -oh. Yes, I'm going to be silly. All right. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> you started already. Chop your arm off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's I almost got him. Yeah, almost. All right. 39 and a half inches is right about 38 and a half. 38. 38 and a half? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Question, is that a resonant dipole? Nope. No. Yeah, it is. Sure it is. Somewhere. Absolutely, it is a resonant dipole. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, for something, it might for be. Not. For, at that frequency, that it is resonant at that frequency. Well, where's your other half of your dipole? Right here. <laughs> now, I, I am being silly here. I am being silly. Okay. This is a resonant. Now, the question is, what, what, what kind of SWR am I going, going to get here? Three. <laughs> Probably not flat. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with setting my radio to 146.52. Close enough. Okay? And can you be my radio operator? Yeah, sure. So go ahead and give that a, a no key. Worries. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this forward. And I have to bring this to full scale when he keys down for me. Um, is it running? Is it running? Let's see okay. here. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Rear and the front end Okay. Go ahead and key down. So now I'm going to adjust this to go to full scale. And now I'm going to switch it to reverse. And that gives me a 2.4-ish, so a little more than 2 point something SWR. Yeah, 
Yeah. Could I use it? Yeah. 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 Sure. Why not? All right. Fifty percent. It's like. Eh. I mean, it was blur. So now let's let's be less silly. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go. Seventeen and a quarter. Nineteen and a half-ish. Nineteen and a half-ish. And then I'll measure it down from there. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, the flies in the ear. That That's just not work for me. Alright, so what did I say? Thirty-eight and a half. <coughs> Let's measure my thirty-eight and a half. Yeah, I'm long. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down a little bit more. You got that side? Yeah, so they can get a hold of it before you turn loose of it. There we go. Okay, so I'm at 19 there, 38 and a half. All right, we'll, we're going to call that close enough. Again, you can tell I'm, I'm not super. Okay, so again, every time we make an adjustment on your antenna system transmission line, because this is measuring ratios, I need to reset my calibration. Okay, go ahead and transmit. Reset the set. Go to reverse. Hey. hey. Nice. That's looking Very much nice. better, huh? Okay, let go. All right. 90%. So, there you go. Is that good enough? Can we use this? Yeah. What's the next step? Stick it in the air. High as you can get it. No. Okay, so this is what I do. This is subject to be corrected by anybody at any time. Oh. I'm going to switch out of okay, this the mode. Frequency. I'm going to get back to 146. And I'm going to select the low end of the band. So I'm at 144 and change. So go ahead and key. Still not bad. Still not bad. See, it, adjust, it changed a little bit. A little bit. Still a nice and usable. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. not bad. 80%. Now I'm going to go to the other end, the top end of the band. I'm going to check there. Go ahead and release. You did? See, I have to adjust again. Mm -hmm. About the same. Pretty darn flat, isn't it? Well, I can't complain about that at all. So I'm checking end to end, okay? I'm going for the target. So that's with an SWR bridge, right? That's, that's how I used to tune all of my antennas, this basic approach, okay? It's time consuming. Then I decided to go and get crazy here and finally buy one of these beasts. This is my pocket, so I don't get it. So I bought this second hand. It's just a little antenna analyzer. And essentially, what it does is exactly the same kind of thing that my radio and SWR meter does, except it has it already all built in. So the SWR meter is on this side. I'll just put it under the camera. Hopefully it focuses. So SWR meter is on the left. And then the impedance <coughs> on that side. We're not going to bother with the impedance very much. For what we're doing here, we're just looking at getting the antenna tuned. Okay. Again, this is for beginners, right? So I turn it on. It does all the stuff. All right? So now it's a little hard to see, but there's a frequency down here on <coughs> the display. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this into the right band. So here's the band selection. I'm going to put it on the 144, and I'm just going to adjust so here's my SWR at the 1. So it's a 1.0 at 1. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go, so it's 1.2, 1.0, and stays at 1.0 until I get to... It's climbing. <coughs> Look at that. So it's pretty much the whole band. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I've got this little band sweep button, and we're going to cheat. And it's going to just sweep the whole band and measure... Oh, that's nice. The whole thing. Okay, that's a beautiful, beautifully tuned antenna, isn't it? Looks yeah. like a dummy load on one. Yeah. It does. <laughs> that's what they say about J-Pole. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you can see it has a dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And that's right. So the trick here is you want to have the whole part of that dip. I'm going to go ahead and switch the center of the band. Yeah. You want to switch yeah. this up, actually switch it down, and then sweep. So now I'm in a different band. So you should see it come down and then go back up. And so what we want to make sure is, is that the that you have a reasonable, and that means different things to different people. Reasonable SWR in your band that you're operating at. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm wiggling here a lot. But. The manual zoom is rough. So you can kind of see how half of it looks. It's got some you wiggle to it. It's just kind of interesting. Got there. Yeah, now I wonder why is that so broad. <laughs> so I'm going to try something. Single element. And I'm not got sure this is. turn loss in that skinny floor, too. That always makes that stuff look a little better. Yeah, I got a long, I've got a whole bunch. Of, yeah. So what I've got here is I've got just a quarter wave length here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squash that down, and I'm going to go the thin side. Will that make any difference? Yes. For me, part of all of this is the experimentation. Play with it. Get your meters out. Get your antennas out. See what it does. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's take this back up to 140. Let's take this over to off. Let's take this back to here and let's set this back to 146. SWR is very low. Okay. Let's see what the band pass is. I the band it has. So let's sweep again. Oh, it's a little bit higher. See, it's it's a little hard to see, but it's it's a little bit steeper. It's not quite as broad, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just detuned it. Maybe I made it shorter. I think maybe it's narrower. It. it went up a little bit. Here's the yeah, here's good. the thing that I've been reading about, and I don't understand it yet, but there's apparently. An issue where the diameter of your conductor affects the bandwidth of your property, yeah. the bandwidth properties of your antenna. So if you have a fat pipe, the full length is much broad band, much mm -hmm. more broad band. Mm -hmm. It's also a little bit shorter. Yeah, which is kind of weird. All right, so I have this antenna. I'm happy. This is good, right? Let me have. That one, and I want this one. If you try one side, you're done. I'm going to install this in PVC. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. There you go, dialect at times. Not bad. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, affecting mm. the property. Oh, yeah. It went up. It detuned my antenna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doggone it. Now what? Well, let's take this off. Let's just lay the PVC right here on top. Let's, let's tune our antenna, but we're holding it up with PVC. It's, uh, it's not bad. It's not too bad, but it will have some effect. So these are weird things you got to watch out for. Now, why? This is non-conductive. Why would this have any impact on our antenna? It's dielectric. Dielectric constant. Okay, you translate that into English. You can have static electricity. It's a... Well, it's a... 
it it's adds RF in some way, some strength. It adds so here's reactants. My, here's my layman's version of this. All right, is it slowing down the signal? It's slowing it down it. the propagation it's, of the it's signal. It's changing the phase. It bends it. It's changing it the phase. Doesn't deflect it; just slows it down. It's kind of like a rubber hose, right? It kind of it it slows so you can everything just slows down, making it electrically longer. It's an oversimplification, but if you put it in PVC, what do you got to do? You got to shorten it, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. You shorten it if it's in enclosed in PVC. All right. What happens if I have some other object come near it? Yeah, it's going to shift it. Turn it 90 and set it on top. So it's more in Oh, sure. Look at that. It affects my impedance. And your hand is. Now I'm going to back up. Mm hmm. That's why I say everything around your antenna is going to affect it. So, including us. Now, if you notice, what I do is I make my adjustments on this antenna, and then I come over here to do my measurements. Alright, so I'm going to look for the dip. There really isn't much of one. It's pretty close. I have to get out of this mode. I'm going to find my center frequency, which is 146.7 right now. But if I'm over here and doing it, right? My body could be affecting this yes. thing. Yes, a little bit if you're close enough. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hands around the antenna stuff, yes. All right. So that's a simple dipole. Okay? Everybody likes dipoles. If you watch, see how the watch will affect it. <laughs> so, one of the interesting conversations we had at the Aries meeting is that, um, well, that's all good, fine, and dandy, but. Um, not everybody uses that antenna. Well, what antennas are a great one for uh, learners to, to start playing with? Well, the old-fashioned, old-school, quarter-wave ground plane. That's your basic beginner's all-purpose starter antenna. New hams might not be able to afford a big fancy antenna, so what we do is you just take a pan <coughs> excuse me, panel mount and solder some wires on it. You borrow that from Ernie? <laughs> well, thank you. No, I made this all by myself. No, I just <laughs> I made it all call. myself. <laughs> okay, so. I'm just going to run the coax up the center because that just keeps it that tight. Well, they get out. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. This up. Keep going. Keep going. There he goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get this side off. Oh. I hated when that happened. Yeah, we won't have done it. Tell me about it. You know what you do when that happens? Everything is carefully planned. I can't ensure it. I'll be just there. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't take one another. There you go. Take ourselves too seriously, right? All right, so here we go. Lesson for. Oh, watch here. You could have made some. All right. There you go. Hey. Now, let's see what we have as far as. What is the center frequency? Oops, wrong, wrong knob. So now I'm going to dip that left needle. And that's my frequency. So here's my question. We now know that this antenna is resonant at 144 megahertz. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, Depends on how wide the bandwidth is. Yeah. Okay, let's check. Exactly. Uh, that's my my question, right? Is it good enough? 
Well, it has to be, it has to have a good SWR across the whole band. So it's resonant down to 144. 145 is starting to come up. 146 is coming up. So it's a little lower than it? Maybe too long. It's a little long. But, so 148, it still hasn't broke 1.5. So here's the question. Here's the question. Is that good enough? Yeah. yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is one where you just leave it be. You know, with your setup here, it reminded me of the old discussion about why do you why do you bend the uh, the radials down? And I believe that the textbook thing when they're hard oh, when they're flat, mm -hmm. it's like seventy five ohm piece or something like that. Yeah, and you're almost yeah. on the high side. Yeah, when anyway. when it's like that, the energy is going this way instead so of this way. This setup way. is a great example of that right now. There you it go. changes the ohms. Mm -hmm. it changes oh, yeah. everything actually. That's crazy. But and it, it might have changed the whoa, resonant frequency. Whoa, look too. at that. And it also the it's... The impedance went up to, what, 75 ohms? Yeah, yeah that's textbook right there. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I've never had it come out like that. It's never been that lucky. You never had that. All right. Yeah. Now let's look and see what... Let's see what the resonant frequency is. Did you get some 75 ohms? Yeah. So... If you can get it. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it down. My SWR is now 1.7. My frequency came up. Wow. Where's but more, more importantly, look at my resistance, R75. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to adjust for a low react reactance. Well, see, if, if the antenna is at 75, when your feed line is at 50, you're creating your own turn loss. Yeah. So that's about as low as it'll go, 1.7. At that frequency. And, and here's the deal, right? Now we're talking about the impedance, because we're at 75 ohms. So what is SWR? I am, I have a resonant antenna. We, we have proven that. So why did my SWR go up? Mismatch between feed line and antennas and feed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why is there what? So this is the mystery for for a lot of folks. Why does it make a difference if the impedance is different? And what happens is it's like a voltage divider. I mean, this is probably wrong, but essentially it's like a voltage divider, and you want the power to be split between your transmitter and your antenna. And you want the, mm -hmm. the transmission line to match, yeah. so that it's all the same impedance, and you have all of your signal hitting here and being radiated. Because it mismatches, you're going to have a reflection coming back before it ever gets the antenna. Yeah, yeah, at the connection. Yeah. Now, I put little doohickeys in here. Mm -hmm. ah, so you didn't come back. But it didn't help my SWR, did it? No. 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 The resonance is still there. No matter yeah, what, you got to exactly. jump on the outside. So what happens if I just say, well, let's split the difference. Let's just fold down half of my radiators. Yeah, yeah. that helped a quite a bit. Now you're about 60 ohms. Up. Okay, now here's the next question. What did I just do to my radiation? But that is one funky looking yeah, it, 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 it <laughs> to this. Where's my where's my signal going? Just because I, I'm getting to resonance doesn't mean that the signal is actually going oh, where I think. Yeah, it's yeah. going this way. It may not be an omni anymore, <clears throat> what I think you're saying. It could have it some may, funny. It may be matter. this kind yeah. of weird <laughs> <laughs> right because here, you're, I'm going to be sending a lot of my signal up that way. Yeah. Here, I'll be sending it kind of between these. So I'll mm -hmm. be having this, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I might want that. I don't yeah. know. Let's just take one of these and take it down. <coughs> Close. They brought it down a little bit more. Yeah. Let's bring this down. <coughs> Much better. Yeah, right. 
<coughs> now, this is changing the impedance of the antenna. Now, I don't have a good enough understanding <coughs> of why the relationship of these elements moving in and out will change the impedance. I don't understand that enough. I know that it's enough to bend it where it works. Put them all down around the, around the antenna and see what it does. Okay. And then we can just into a It'll go even lower. Uh, I'm going to have to raise well, this up a little bit. As you do that, you can so come closer done. and closer to it. Short. Halfway dipole again. Yeah. Mm. And that will be resonating. Okay. So my impedance went down further, but let's let's look at what my resonant frequency is. Oh wow! So I'm gonna we're gonna adjust again. So I'm at, okay. So I'm down here at 140, 141, 142. Actually, you can see that, so I don't need to tell you. <laughs> so you can see the... It went up a little right, bit. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep so we can see what that looks like. Merge now. So... It's more of the matching the antenna impedance to get your SWR. But you have to have that and your resonance, right? Yeah. So again, I just change my frequency. Just change the next band up. We'll do another sweep. We'll see where it is. Yeah. You just swept his radio. Yeah. <laughs> See there, now it's starting to climb back up. Yeah, it's dramatic. Says who? Says who? Says who? Let's get back on 146. Now let's go back. Let's go back to 146. And we get back to the null. There we go. Okay. So we're at one. Okay, I'm at 144, 143, 144. So because this is cut a little long, right? Good. You probably just raise the radiation angle. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's more. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but look at my um, my resonant frequency is 144. Mm -hmm. I didn't change the resonant frequency. Hmm. So here's a couple things I want to just say. Number one. Yeah, looks good. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, you can do some goofy, weird things with these antennas. And I have no idea what to expect for the radiation pattern on this. They probably raised it a little bit. Yeah. Put an easy neck to find out. Yeah. yeah. you got to watch how high If you put a plane on top. It changes everything also. If you put radiators on the top end to match those, oh, oh. Yeah, then it will. That's called a bicone. Yeah, it'll it'll go this way instead of this Apparently, way. Apparently, they're not very good antennas. Yeah. Not well, but they <laughs> they're they, good. They're broad banded, but they're just they're not. They apparently well, the they variation on that when you brought your elements down, you're simulating a skirt, and a lot of people yeah. have successfully you take like copper tubing uh -huh. at about a quarter wavelength. Yep. And, and it goes over the top of yep. your support mat. 
How many of you have built the, the, the cable, the, the coax cable antenna that has quarter wave come out the top and then the, and then the, shield, the shielding gets folded back over it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a pain in the butt antenna yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a choke. Tweaking. All that's doing is creating a choke. Yeah. Okay, well, it's a quarter wave stub, basically. So if you put your two ferrite chokes in there, you're doing the same thing. Just, yeah. just cut off the end and make a quarter wave and two chokes and you'll get the same performance. Really? You would think it does not seem to so work that So put those elements form. off. <laughs> <laughs> you went to too much trouble. To yeah, I said I didn't want to do a lot of work on getting all this. All right. <laughs> Next thing. Go ahead. All right. Catch the top of it. Catch the top of it. Oh, yeah. That's. All right. So. Again, one of the things that's really important, especially I, I've learned this when I've done a lot of operating in the field, is trees in particular, mm -hmm. green trees especially, are not your friend. Mm -hmm. Don't hang your antenna in a tree. That might be the only thing you've got to put it up in the air. Yeah. Low frequencies are that okay. That may be true, but get, get your antenna away from it as much as you can. You know, there's the ways you can do that. So. I mean, <laughs> You can see just how much that. All right, I have another demonstration. This is this one. I thought was I did this just for, just for the hell of it. Okay, here's my handy talkie. Okay, let's let's find where that is resonant. One forty-five point nine. So that's pretty good. Now I'm going to clip it onto my belt. And I'm going to hang it on me. What happens to my SWR? It goes way up. Way up. Way up. Way, way up. Huh. Look at that. Yeah. Almost unusable. It's a body of water. Okay. Now I'm going to adjust the frequency. Let's see if we can find the resonance. Okay. Way, way down. Can you read the frequency? 127. Mm -hmm. It made it longer. Yeah. That's a lot like that PVC trick, isn't it? Yeah. You got a tail to put on it, see what it does? Put, yeah, there you go. Worse. Wow. Yeah, it should go down even farther with that. Well, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, let's take this back to Why one point. Why couldn't you not tune that by doing a quarter wave from your body, doing the old mm -hmm. T-hunt yeah. pressure? Okay. So it might, might tune up. I, so you I had a quarter wave. There it is. So this is a approximately a quarter wave. Is that looking right? Yeah. No. What happens if I put a quarter wave uh, tail on it? Yeah, it's still holding the same it thing, yeah. So you have to have your handy talkie away from your body for the antenna to be in tune. Not a big surprise, is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Okay. That is this antenna analyzer. I've shown you this old school type. Is everybody familiar with the crossed needle? I'll put that mm -hmm. under here so we can all see it better. So this is your cross needle style. <laughs> right, forward power versus reflected, and where the two needles cross, that's your SWR. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, same basic principle. Now, an interesting thing, the um, Yesu 817 has a built-in SWR meter. No, it doesn't, actually. 
that'll show me a bad signal. And I look on my meter, and it looks like you know 1.2. It is something not quite the same thing as an SWR meter, okay? So, nevertheless, it does give you a good indicator when something drastic just happened, right? If, so basically what I'm trying to say here is put an SWR meter in line with your antennas because stuff happens and your antennas will break and your SWR will jump and you won't, might not know it. Uh, there he is, right there. <laughs> what? And tennis broke didn't know it. Levi. Oh, yeah. He had that problem. <clears throat> All right. Any questions? We're going to, before I go on to my next antenna, we're going to talk about the J pole, everybody's favorite antenna to love and hate. So, how many people have a J pole? Yeah. How many hate J poles? Yeah. No. How many think they're a compromise antenna? Yeah. I I honestly don't get. Some people don't like them, and they'll tell you all about it. And I honestly don't get why. Um, I think they're they're good for what they're designed to do. Mm -hmm. And that is work. Get. A signal up, right? You've got a half wave dipole. That's essentially what this is. So this is cut to be a half wave. And it's a little long, but mm -hmm. keep in mind, this is shorter for a reason. Yeah. Do you remember? Diameter. The diameter. The diameter. Exactly. You guys are already on it. Okay, so that's a half wave. This is quarter wave. Everything's good, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get this hooked up to the antenna analyzer. So how do you tune a J-pole? Move the uh, connections up and down. What are we doing? Because the pole is already resonant. Remember I showed you that dipole at the beginning? Mm -hmm. It was resonant. But our impedance was way out of whack. Okay, let's turn this back on. All right, so let's see where our center frequency is. Oh, wow. We're at 144.8. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this to 146. And I'm just going to slide these up and down. Yeah, they need to be lowered, I believe. Maybe. Now let's go maybe, up. Maybe not. We go up or down? Up. Up. Let's go a little there more. Go. That's better. Uh, it's your body's. Now, one of the things I've heard people say is, I can't get these things to tune for me worth a darn. They, you know, it's a fight to adjust these things get them right. What am I doing? Wasting Wait. time. You're, 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 you're loading it up your body it. when you move it. <laughs> Sorry? I said wasting time. You're going to put it up and use it. <laughs> it's going to be all right. It's important. But your pattern is, if you make contact, it's okay. But if you're driving around, you're going to be driving on the trees, the water tower, and that car next to you. I absolutely agree with you. But I'm just trying to find the center of this thing, right? So so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. But what do you guys pointed out? Where am I? You're too close. Does it make a huge difference? It changes a little bit. When you touch it is when it... Okay, so here we go. We're going to keep going down. Yeah, that's better. Keep going down? About two and a quarter inches up to the that's about it. It's worse than going, going up. Did go to the end. Now you got to play with it. I'm going to keep going down. Yeah. Going Not good. Down. Yeah. Yeah. It's becoming a short. <laughs> okay. What's my impedance? Too low. My impedance right over here? Yeah. I'm at 40, 40 ohms. Let's watch this, see if it goes up. 
Should just a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Down, didn't it? Yeah. <coughs> down. Down. Go down? Yeah. It's a real small sweet spot right there. Yeah, it's the SWR that's important, not the impedance. All right, so let's do a sweep and see what we get. Let's see where we're at. Well, this one's not quite as uh, broad banded as my no. bent up uh, it's more selective. ground plane, is it? Yeah, it's and it starts coming yeah. back up. But it's resonant right about yeah. where we want it. That's a good pattern. Mm -hmm. yep. What would a choke and up or a bailing do? It is well, a bailing. I have a I have chokes on here. That's what these three are. Oh, okay. All right. right? But what if you don't have those there, now we are now moving into the world of religion. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Just say, the supernatural. I'm just saying. <laughs> See this piece down here? Yeah. It does make Does a this have any impact on the yes. radiation of the antenna? Yes. The bottom piece? No. 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 Yes. No. Anybody yes. else have an opinion? Yes, Come on. it does. No. Come on. No. Bring it. Come on. It's not supposed to. Of course it's going to have it's an impact because goal. it's electrically connected. Well. Is it going to be a meaningful difference? Not much. Probably not. If we go with Ernie Sloan's school of, of, of radio, what the heck? Come on. <laughs> Tune it and move on. you got other things to write about. I can to something here on the Go for it. All right. He was sliding this up and down about a different characteristic, right? So wouldn't you feel that if this slider was all the way down here, that'd be zero. Sure, yeah. That'd be zero on the uh, reactants. Yeah, the right? impedance, yeah. So what he's really done is this is a, a tuning stub, and he's come up so this is 50 ohm coax, and at this point, he's matching this this uh, parallel feed line, really, is what it is. Mm -hmm. he, and he's going from balanced to unbalanced and all that crap. All of, but really, right here is your 50 ohm point. Right. Because if this is zero and this is 50, this might be 100 or, yeah. or yeah. something. Now, also the uh, there's one trick. All that doesn't really mean a lot. You can get it to do what you want. But I thought that there was another trick that if you put this mm -hmm. closer together... Yeah. Because this is more inductive than capacitive, and if you add a little capacitance, a little more, mm -hmm. whatever there might be in the in the stray distributed capacitance, if you bend it in a little bit, you might lower that that uh, ultimate VSWR. But then you might have to readjust the tap point too again. So I just showed the difference. It's important too. So, I have, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the feed line and see if that has any impact on anything. Yes, well, especially without those chokes. So, is it important to decouple the antenna from the tower? Yes. Is it important to decouple the antenna from the feed line? I think the feed line will change the antenna. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on. Bob, you made a statement, and I want to, I want to have fun with this statement. Not with you, but with the state. Go. <laughs> say it. Say it again. Basically, the feed line. I found out the feed line that certain uh, length will really affect the uh, yes. WR. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Yes. Why I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it becomes part of the uh, the antenna. Hopefully, that's not me. <laughs> That's an alarm. Whoa. I'm curious. Remember you played with the... Or did you put it back? I changed it. Yeah. Now let's let's adjust. Yeah. Uh, push it up. Yes. Yeah, that's better. 
Uh, uh, too much. Not too much. There. Hey, that's great. More? <laughs> a little more. Right there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's about good. right. Think that's good? You have to just hold it. Yeah. All right. Let now, we just have to put you up on the roof being down. <laughs> okay, so now let's let's see if we can get a dip here. Whoa. So it's all of a sudden 152. Yeah. It's good for fleece pain. <laughs> well, I'm going wacko. Wow. Hmm. That the resonance went way up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now put a choke on it, just wind the cable. The impedance went way down. You know, wind the cable smaller or whatever. Neil? Uh, yeah. yeah. One thing uh, changes it on this. Mm -hmm. So the wide clips. Mm -hmm. Don't do as well as a narrow clip. Yeah. Okay. Our shorting bar is just a, a steady bar across it. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Your cable is just a little bit short as possible oh, for yeah. general use. That works best. Mm -hmm. Shoulder just put up. Yeah. For convenience. Talk about this coil. I don't know if that's going to make any meaningful no, difference. A little bit, not much. Should lower. All right, so let's just do the coiling. Yeah, let's just coil it. Yeah. <laughs> what I do is I, I put the coax parallel and I clip it to the bottom, so it has a constant, and then I tune it. Yeah, and I, I, I attach it in parallel, standing off from the base, and then I tune it. Yeah, that's... Okay, so this is a good segue. Something's fishy about this cable. All right, so your point. So I, I want to know what's going on with this cable. Is there anything, is there any weird issues you can have with the cable? Oh, Not the cable itself. The cable could be fine. It's the length. length. The length. Cool. How do I measure the length of this cable? You terminate it. <laughs> Tape measure? Tape measure. Okay. How do you measure the electrical length? Because it's not the same. You terminate it. Oh. There you go. I'm going to throw it down. Unterminated. Okay, here we go. You ready? It's going to show you how to do this. It's going to be high. I'm going to bring this frequency all the way down. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sweep back and forth, and I'm just going to start working my way up until I get to the first tip. frequency the first tip. that shows a low impedance. Lower impedance. Well, whoops. Whoa. <laughs> whoops. Okay, we're getting close. Got a high amount of Q in it there, too. Mm -hmm. okay. There. Oh, there, there you go. go. That went way down. Where are you about now? Yeah, we can read the can't read the frequency. Okay, I'm, I'm getting that there. That dip occurs, what, what frequency were you at? That's, that's what I'm trying well, to do. There's just going to be a right bunch now. of them all, in there. Yeah. all the way up to oh, infinity. Yeah. Just get closer together. So what you want to do is you want to find the lowest frequency mm -hmm. where your R is the lowest. So you're dipping the R Actually, it's the X as well. Mm. 
Yeah, it's much the meter is actually a little bit more responsive. I'll say no. That's a quarter wavelength. Here. Mm -hmm. So that is a quarter wavelength. So now that's a quarter wavelength. So it's thirteen point nine. So what's the um, electrical length? Thirteen point nine megahertz. All right. So here's what I've learned. You've got this cool number here. If you do two four five point five divided by the frequency, this gives you a the length quarter wavelength of free space. No propagation wave, no propagation delay. This is free space speed of light. Mm -hmm. So if I take 245.5, 245.5 divided by, what do you say? 13.9. 13.9. I'm just going to go with that. Okay. Put the draw oh, it's 13. <laughs> I did that wrong. 245.5 divided by 13.9 equals 17.6 so 17 feet. That would be the distance light would travel. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. So we can measure the velocity factor of that line. Okay. And then we can figure out how many wavelengths are actually in there. Okay, so that's my that's my free space. What's the measurement of this cable? So we need a middle guy. So now we need a tape measure. I'm betting. I'm betting this is going to come out to some weird length that's like. Yeah. On uh, well, uh, a certain. Okay, I've got it. Okay, Bob. We're at uh, 175 and a half. 175. Okay, what's the feet? That's uh, 14 feet. Uh, 14. Uh, 14 foot seven. 14 and a half. And a half. 14 and a half feet. Yeah. Okay. So now the difference is your velocity factor. Velocity. I can even talk to it. Yeah. So I'm going to take 14.5 like times. Foam. So foam. That's velocity factor of what? 14.5 uh, divided by like 17.7 equals an 82. That's about right. 82%. So the velocity factor is about 82.4%. We're going to call it 82.4%. see foam and polyethylene and all that crap. It's slightly different. So now you can figure out your wavelengths. Okay? You can start figuring out your wavelengths. What's the wavelength of light? What, what's the wavelength in free space at 146? So let's go ahead and do that. 245. 245.5 <laughs> <laughs> divided by 146 megahertz equals, or was that a resonant frequency? I don't remember. Well, we'll just go with 146. Yeah. So that's 1.68 feet is a quarter wavelength. And the reason we're interested in a quarter wavelength is because it has interesting properties. So if this end is open of a transmission line, if this end is open, then the signal, this will be an infinite, it'll transform, ah, I can't talk here. It transforms the impedance. Okay, so if this is a quarter wavelength, it takes an, an open circuit and makes it look like a short circuit. Yeah. 
That's how we measured the length of that. We measured the length of it by finding the frequency at which the impedance dropped to zero or near zero. Then we calculated the, the physical length of it, or actually we calculated the velocity factor off of that. Now we can go back and say, well, how many at 146 megahertz, how many would fit in that? So I'm going to do that <coughs> and copy it. And I'm going to say we measured 14 and a half feet. So 14.5 divided by base to the sim equals Fourteen point five okay. times. Let's point. let's try this without the extra. Divide um divide by base equals. Okay, so it comes out to eight point six quarter wavelengths. So I don't think it's going to be an exact match for that. Maybe there's something else going on. It's not. So it should be a, an odd number. Well, nine. Yeah. Nine of these. But, but remember that, that could fit. if you're going to repeat the impedance of the antenna at your source, yeah. that, that the feed line has to be an exact number of odd quarter wavelengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to, to respond to Bob's comment is if right. you're off a little bit, it changes the feed impedance and everything goes screwy. And these things are awfully sensitive to the to a feed line changes. Let's do a this. Broadband antenna isn't quite quite that Let's sensitive do this. to feed line link length differences. Let's take your cable and stretch it with another cable. If my theory is right, as the length, because this is close to nine of these long, nine quarter wavelengths, that would be that magic dork you up type of <laughs> length of cable. Right? So let's stretch the cable, your cable, wherever it went. Okay? What we're going to do is we're just going to add a chunk on there and see what happens. Because I've had the same thing. I've done it. I've tuned an antenna and go, I can't get this stupid thing to tune. What the heck? And then I go and throw the cable out. And I go grab another cable. I hook up. Boom. And it tunes up you. Right? And then I go test the cable, and the cable's fine. Yeah, it's not the cable, it's the length. It's the length. So, I want to know how I run this on my abacus. But, but if you go crazy on this length changing, you get too much feed line loss, it's going to look good. I don't have enough balls. <laughs> <crowd on. laughs> the yeah, right. Because the return loss is going to be attenuated. Well, we're, we're, we're talking here, about a few feet here, here so... I'm hoping that that won't be the case because we're only talking about 10 feet. We're not talking about 50 or 100 feet, right? You've got a lot there now. Well, that's Just going to put about a piece of 213. <laughs> right, uh, the difference. Okay, okay, so let's hook that up. And let's go to 140. That's why it's better be so early, better more. Hmm. Feed line long. Something's loose here. Yeah, I was say you were moving something that it was changing. Oh, there's a bad end on that? Or That's good. 144, 145. Your cable did something weird. And then, so, all of this to say, that we're pretty much to the end of what I have to show you guys. All I wanted to show, and thank you, Bob, for pointing that out, is that you can do some weird, funky things to your antennas, and it'll work fine. You can do some other things, you think, ah, this should have no effect. You know, Ooh, wait a second, something's wrong here. And then there's other times when you're tuning up your antenna and you're going, 
this isn't working. What the heck? This thing's driving me crazy. Hmm. Don't torture yourself. Back up. Try a different approach. 